Hello my fellow scientists, today I want to talk about two things. The first is the all-iron battery. Brief update, we have been trying to increase the performance of the all-iron battery. It started two years ago with a iron anode and an iron 3 salt cathode. We've been through a lot of iterations and now we're working on iron sulfate as the iron 3 salt. And that has been a mixed success. I did a video, I'll link in the description, that used a lot of sodium hydroxide to crash that iron 3 sulfate to make iron oxide hydroxide and that uh, didn't last very long it and in our continued testing just doesn't recharge very efficiently so we're going to do better uh, we've tried to add ammonium ions initially i thought that might be helping because the ammonia might act as an auxiliary complexing agent and sort of help the iron stay soluble but some further reading suggests that's not the case that Iron ammonium complexes just aren't very stable, and in fact, it's probably just a pH issue. As a quick aside, we did this time lapse of ferric ammonium sulfate crystallizing, and we actually found ferric ammonium sulfate crystals in our cell when we took it apart when we used these components. So these crystals aren't conductive, they don't allow the iron to be accessible to the electrons, and so they're just not what we actually want to form. So we need to do better. Iron metal to iron hydroxide is a reversible process. It's in the Edison cell. It really likes alkaline conditions. On the flip side, iron 3 to iron 2 would really prefer acidic conditions. In the iron 1.0 battery, we kind of struck the balance at pH 7.5, and we're going to try to hit that again. So we need to do some work to titrate how much sodium hydroxide we need to add in order to get just the right conditions, but we'll get back to you with that next week. In the meantime, I was reading about the Monty Hall problem. It's kind of a little statistical math problem. It goes like this. You're given three doors, and it, behind one is a prize, and the other two have nothing. If you randomly pick a door, you have a one in three chance of getting the prize. But here's a twist. You pick a door, and then the game show host comes out and opens a different door, one of the blank doors. And you have the option. You can switch your stay. So if you keep the stay strategy, if you just stay with whatever you pick, you still keep the one in three chance. So what are the odds of getting the prize if you go with the pick and switch strategy? So Daniel Kahneman wrote this book called Thinking Fast and Slow. And in that book, he says that there are two modes of thinking. And one is an intuitive mode, and the other is a more rigorous analytical mode. And statistics are particularly better geared to the more rigorous analytical mode. So if you guessed 50%, probably using your more intuitive mode, which I certainly did the first time I saw this problem, but it takes a bit of careful analysis to figure out the real answer. So let's go through it. If you pick the first door and then switch, that's your strategy. Pick door number one and then switch once he opens a different door. What happens if the price is behind door number one then you pick number one, you switch to one of the other doors, and you lose. But if the prize is behind door number two, you pick door number one, he's going to open door number three, a blank door, you're going to switch to door number two, and you win. If the prize is behind door number three, you choose door number one, he opens door number two, you switch to number three, and you win. So there are two out of the three scenarios in which you win the prize with the pick and switch strategy, right? So it's 66% is the correct answer. So there's a wonderful article talking about the Monty Hall problem down in the description. And the story goes that a columnist wrote back to a reader in a magazine, an actual print magazine many decades ago. And the reader had asked about the Monty Hall program and the author explained why the correct answer is 66% and then got tens of thousands of physical mail letters saying, you're an idiot, that's wrong, it's ob obviously 50-50, and you should go back to school. And a lot of those letters were really gendered, like, you got it wrong because you're a woman. And, you know, I think it's worth remembering that that kind of garbage happened pre-internet in a big enough uh, venue that, that it's just sort of amplified by the immediacy of the internet, but it was still there. Anyway, I digress. Point being, 
some of these very intelligent people with PhDs, professors at universities, had to really uh, apologize and walk their language back because she was, of course, 100% right. It's 66%. That's the correct answer. And it's worth uh, checking your work before you call somebody out, I suppose. So anyhow, Monty Halt problem. Link in the description. I found it very amusing. We'll get back to you next week with the all-iron battery. And with that, I will leave you. This has been Peter Allen for the Allen Lab.